On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, China has launched a battery-powered container ship. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglano. Welcome to today's episode. So battery-powered ship, not new. We've seen these happening in the past. We saw Norway introduce one not too long ago. We're going to talk about it. We've seen them introduced on river traffic, particularly uh, cruise lines. But battery power has always been an issue because of the size of the batteries and the time it takes to recharge the batteries. But it seems like China has a way to overcome that hurdle. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. All right, let's jump into this. So this is the Norwegian Yara Birkenland. This is the vessel two years ago that really shook up this entire industry. Not only was the ship emission free, but it was also autonomous, meaning it didn't have a crew on board. The ship could carry a very minuscule amount, only about 120 TEUs, but it could replace 40,000 truckloads that would be necessary to travel around. And that was seen as pretty significant. Now, the ship was really limited to where it went. It actually was only within 12 miles of the coast at any one time. And the total voyage was about 40 miles. So not a huge voyage. But in Norway, along the fjords, this was really crucial because it prevented having to haul goods between the fjords and using other vessels to do it. And this has always been the kick with battery powered vessels because of the time it took to recharge them and the amount of battery space that they occupied really limited their utility well china has come up with a way to overcome that so this is it china has launched its first 700 tu this is 20 foot equivalent unit electric container ship for yangtze service you'll notice that this ship has a kind of an x bow this is the type of bow we're talking about up forward here forward bridge you'll see the spaces here for containers and back here are going to be cells for containers but not for cargo containers these are for battery containers so coming to the story here by maritime executive China completed the float out of its first 700 TEU pure power container ship. The vessel, which is being built for Costco shipping heavy industries, is part of an effort to use electrical powered vessel vessels throughout the Yangtze region. It is the first of two river container ships built for this purpose. The ship is scheduled to commence sea trials in September, 393 feet long, a beam of 77.5 feet, 10,000 tons, 18 foot draft, and again, capable of carrying 700 TEUs. They're designed to sail a route stretching more than 600 miles along the range. They really don't specify the range of this vessel, but we know they're gonna be operating on this 600 mile circuit. Reports are saying that the vessel will have the largest installed battery capacity yet placed on board a ship. This is where it's unique. They are utilizing a containerized battery approach with 36 replaceable containers as the power source. They will swap batteries along the route with batteries recharge stations along the shore. So the biggest, biggest hindrance we've been seeing with battery powered vehicles of any type is the charging issue. You have to stop and charge and charging takes a long amount of time usually, even with fast chargers. This kind of alleviates that. What you see back here are a series of cells where they can put the battery modules into. And these battery modules can be slid in and out. And as they're depleted, they can be taken off at the next port and new ones put on board. With the idea is you're loading containers on the midships area of the vessel as you're loading your containers for feeder service. And what this ship would do is pick up containers, bring them up and down the river to the major ports. They can also be grabbing their power containers and changing them out so that there should be conceivably no time lost. Now, it doesn't really go into detail about the switchover, but you would envision a plug and play type system where they're literally just plugging in and then turning the power, the power units on and being able to pull from the batteries. It goes on here. Each of the ships will be powered by two 900 kilowatt main propulsion motors. When the project was unveiled last year, Costco said the containerized batteries would be the size of a 20 foot container with a capacity of 50,000 kilowatts. In addition, they'll employ a smart ship management system to increase the efficiency of the operations, which probably includes which batteries to use and how to switch them out. It will be able to intelligently adjust energy consumption based on the needs of the ship. It will plan the speed of the voyage according to the arrival time, water flow, battery capacity, and other factors. Construction on N998, the second vessel in the class, began in May and will be operated by the Shanghai Pan Asia Shipping, a subsidiary of Costco. During the float-out ceremonies, officials said that they were the first batch of green zero-carbon ships that would serve as a pilot 
for future programs. So this is a really novel idea. We've talked about this idea of modular power units before. And this is a good practical nature for it. The Yangtze River, coastal river like, like the Yangtze, which has fairly good sized vessels going up and down. This is a great test for this. You saw this actually with early steamboat propulsion because steamboat propulsion, when it was initially used, required a lot of fresh water and required a lot of fuel, in that case, wood, later on coal. And so along rivers were really good places to introduce this. And I think China is going to really prove that with this design right now. There is a couple of issues with this that you should be aware. When you take these batteries off, you need a batch of these batteries. You're not going to need just 36. You're going to need probably at least double, if not triple, that amount of batteries for this so that you have them available to swap out. The other issue you have is where do you get the power from to charge those batteries? Because right now, the biggest fuel source used to power uh, to power China is coal. Uh, coal is the one commodity that's being used more than anything else in China to generate power. So while you're burning green energy on your batteries, your batteries are being charged by a coal-fired plant. And that's the other element here we also need to be aware of. Also, the I'm really going to be interested in the weight issue here. The batteries are really heavy. They're going to be really heavy batteries. And they have them seem to be placed along the stern side there, which is probably close to the engine and better distribution of power there. Uh, they're going to be heavy. Uh, obviously, you're going to have stability and, and, and uh, trim tanks on it. The images we're seeing the vessel right now is light. It's being towed. But this is really the first time we're going to see this put into a practical use on board cargo ships. And I think it really marks a opportunity for other nations and other areas to embrace this idea of battery power. Now, are we going to see massive container ships going across the ocean with them? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Not yet. Number one, you would need this amount of containers amplified. If you're looking at this vessel right now, we're talking about 36 containers on a vessel that's rated to carry 700 TEU. So you're talking about a fraction, a percentage of the overall cargo. So that's about 5% of the total capacity they're carrying in batteries. If you go to a ship like Everlot, 24,000 TEU vessel, you start talking about 5%. You're talking about 1,200 containers, and you're probably going to need a lot more on board them than that. So you may be talking about 10% capacity. Uh, that's going to be a big issue, obviously, loading that amount of containers and batteries on board a larger vessel. Is it impossible? No, I, I don't think it's impossible at all. And I think this idea of modular fuel is a really interesting one. And I think batteries are one of those areas you're going to see it really develop. So we're going to be following this story and all the technology that goes on in ocean shipping. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, give it a thumbs up and support the page. How do you do that? Hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly yearly subscriber. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.